All right, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning from the Netherlands. Um, my name's David Miller. I'm the CEO of the Concrete Institute of Australia. It's my pleasure to bring you today our webinar on modular concrete buildings, a European experience. We're going to hear today from uh, two people from Leviat, our own Andreas Boomkamp, who's the National Technical Manager here for Leviat in Australia, Richard Morsink, who's the Development Manager for Precast for Leviat in the Netherlands. And we appreciate Richard getting up very early in the morning over in uh, the Netherlands this morning. And Roger Vandenbrink, who's with Vorbige Prefab in the Netherlands. And they work very closely with Leviat in the Netherlands. And we also thank Roger for getting up so early in the morning. Just a little bit about the Concrete Institute of Australia. Our vision is excellence in concrete, and it's our mission to promote and develop excellence in concrete research, technology, application, design, and construction. And we do that through our many members, both individual and company. And you will see here our, our three platinum members who we thank very much for their ongoing support of the Concrete Institute of Australia, in particular, Leviat, who also have with their brands and con Conley and Halfen, and I'm sure um, most Australian Concrete Institute of Australia members are very familiar with the Ancon and Connolly brands, and you'll learn a little bit more about Leviat uh, when we get to Andreas's presentation a little later on. We also have a number of gold company members, and you can see these organisations up here on your screen. And we also have a number of silver company members, and again, we thank all our members for their ongoing support. You'll notice that today's event is also supported by the National Precast Concrete Association of Australia. And you'll see the National Precast logo over here on the side. And we thank National Precast for their support as well. And finally, our awards will be presented at Concrete 2021, our conference to be held from the 5th to the 8th of September next year in Perth. It should be a fantastic event. And uh, abstracts are actually uh, uh, due today, the 1st of December. Although uh, hot off the press, we will be extending that by two weeks. And so an email will go out tomorrow to our members and our delegates regarding abstract submissions. We've already got well over 100 abstracts submitted for the conference, and we're expecting that to double uh, over the next couple of weeks. And it should be a fantastic event with the theme, Smart and Innovative Concrete from Disruption. Um, it certainly is a, a very appropriate theme, given the challenges we've experienced in 2020. So jump onto the website www.ciaconference.com.au. Uh, you'll see all the details about the abstract submissions, but also sponsorship, exhibition, and uh, all the details for the conference. And just before we kick off today's event, our eConcrete online learning platform has been an extremely important part of the Concrete Institute this year. All the webinars that we have presented on a Thursday afternoon have been recorded and are available there on demand. As I mentioned before, this a particular webinar will be available through our YouTube site free of charge, but you can go back through our back catalogue of technical webinars for this year and find them all on the eConcrete online learning platform. I'm now going to pass over to Andreas Boomkamp, who I mentioned before is the National Technical Manager for Leviat in Australia. And Andreas is going to give us a bit of an introduction to Leviat and, uh, and the reasons why they've changed uh, their branding and, and how they've come about. Um, and we'll give us uh, uh, the rundown on, on where things are happening there. Andreas, I'm going to hand over to you and give you control of the remote. Yeah, thanks so much for the introduction, David, and thanks for, for having us here. Always good to be with the Concrete Institute. So, yeah, we, we had some changes here in the company, and I thought it, it is good to give a little introduction here to, to tell people who we are, people that know us probably under Anken or under Connolly, uh, to explain what Leviat is. So Leviat unites the expertise, skills and resources of the CRH construction accessories companies now under one single global organization. And, and what that means is what, what is happening today here. So we have our um, knowledgeable colleagues over in, in Europe that, that have a lot, of, a lot of experience with certain ways of building. And we as Leviat can now um, draw this knowledge over here in Australia and see what, what we can learn from our colleagues over there. So I think today's seminar is a very good experience of what Leviat uh, will stand for. Um, oh, that went a little bit quicker than it should. 
Um, we are 3,000 employees worldwide. Uh, we are at 60 locations. We are selling products in, in more than 30 countries worldwide, and we are producing on, on four continents, including Australia. So we are, we are local here while we're still having the expertise from the global company. And we are including 10 brands that I will show later. Um, most important in a company is always the employees. So here you see our staff uh, over in, uh, or here where I'm sitting in, uh, in the west of Sydney, um, welcoming the new Leviat brand. The video should run now. It As mentioned, we are local. So we have five brands over here in Australia. Our four sales brands in, uh, in Sydney with the head office, Melbourne, Casino, uh, Melbourne, uh, Brisbane, and Perth. And then we have a production facility for the Connolly material uh, also in Casino. Um, in our sites, we have production. And in, in here in Sydney, we also have the engineering resources. So for any technical questions, um, just call us or send us an email and we, we can uh, uh, supply all uh, knowledge that is required for this, uh, for this product. The brands, um, like David mentioned, most of you will be familiar with the Enken brand, probably with the Connolly brands that are here local from Australia. Isidio is also locally already um, in Australia. Uh, but we are also pushing for other uh, products that, that make perfect sense for the Australian construction industry, like, like the Harfen product range, um, Helifix for masonry, um, for people that, that work warm with masonry, they will be familiar with the Helifix products. And we will always look at which kind of products could make sense to be introduced here in Australia to, to give you better product. Here are some of the product segments we are playing in. Concrete, so the, higher, the Enken product range uh, within concrete with our shear load connectors that are shown here, but also with all the couplers. Um, we have the precast items with all the lifting um, that we are offering through Enken. Uh, the masonry products uh, under the Enken range. The half and anchor channels, uh, which are also now compliant with the Australian standard AS5216. Uh, slab of ground material, which comes from Connolly and also from Isidio, and all kind of special special fabrications that we can do. So we are in in all kind of construction from uh, non-residential building, residential building over to infrastructure projects all around the world, and also industrial applications. Uh, and here just some local projects that I want to close my little introduction with. Uh, any questions, please feel, feel free to contact me later. You know where we are, and uh, I'm sure you, you can contact us here locally in Australia. And now I, I want to switch over to my colleague Richard in the uh, in Netherlands. Thank you, Andreas. Always a, a good little presentation from you and a, a good introduction to, to Leviat for us in Australia. Um, now, today's presentation is titled Modular Concrete Buildings, a European Experience. And I've had an opportunity to have a look at uh, the presentation we're about to see. And uh, it is a fascinating look at some uh, experiences happening um, in Europe, particularly in the Netherlands at the moment. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Richard to, uh, to lead us off. Um, and uh, I hope everybody enjoys the presentation this afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, David. Good afternoon, Australia. Good morning, Europe. It's still early here. My name is uh, Richard Morsing, and I appreciate uh, to be one of your, the guest speakers today in this webinar from Leviat. I've been working at Halfen in the Netherlands for uh, 30 years, mainly in the Dutch uh, precast industry. And uh, since this year, I work as development manager for the precast industry within the new global Leviat organization. This is the overview of the agenda of this presentation. In this presentation, I will explain to you how we have developed and successfully applied our HEC2 precast connection within the development of modular construction in the Netherlands. In addition, I will also show you customers and projects in the Netherlands and the UK in which we have applied our products. This is mainly concerning housing. A few other applications are also discussed. I'm also looking forward to introduce to you an important customer, Rogier van der Brink from 4 Bay Prefab, which was already announced by David. Rogier supported our HEC2 
product development uh, from the start five years ago and has now three years experience in this method of precast connection uh, in his factory in, and in, in the projects. Industrial, flexible, demountable, sustainable building. IFD building stimulates the innovative application of industrial developed and produced building components in new and to be improved homes, utility buildings and structures. This mountability and flexibility make it possible to use the same building for longer with different users. Standardization contributes to the efficient use of building materials, not only in manufacturing, but also in later reuse. IFD construction contributes directly to the realization of objectives of more economical use of primary raw materials and promotes reuse in the end. BIM has been an integral part of the Dutch construction industry for the last 10 years, especially since the recession. Software tools such as uh, Tecla, Revit, Alplan are now the basis for 3D engineering in more than 50% of all the projects. Architects, engineers, contractors, precasters, subcontractors, and suppliers work fully together in open models. In addition, everyone contributes in their 3D information in the elaborate model. This makes factory production and assembly even easier. Well, this is the standard uh, HEC2 connection, the anchor plate with serration and a 35 millimeter round hole. The HEC anchor plate is cast in on one side of the element and a threaded fixing anchor on the other side of the element. The serration can also absorb transverse load. A hexagon bolt M16 and a serrated counterplate screw the two precast elements together. The connection can be loaded immediately uh, in axial and in shear uh, load direction. These are the features and the benefits of HEC. It can take axial and shear force in combination possible. It has a DUT uh, approval. You can uh, do dry mounting without any mod or without any welding. It has a high corrosion protection because it's hot dip galvanized. It is immediately load transferable after the mounting. You can choose for indoor or outdoor installation. It is the base for modular construction method. Factory fitted dimensionally stable installation. It is coupling wall to wall, wall to floor and floor to floor connections and also other precast connections. It has a very short installation time and it's very important weather independent. These are alternative solutions, self-made screw connections, which are very often extensive in design, unsafe from quality and oversized. Some welded connections, they require special qualification and equipment. They also require short-term temporary bracing. They are depending on the weather and the coating needs to be recovered uh, afterwards, after the welding. The HEC2 has two types of anchor plates with integrated self-anchoring ends, type L for longitudinal and type T for transverse load. Type T has a marking so that it still can be identified after the installation with a recess former on the mold. The counter plate with a roll with a hollow hole around 70 millimeter is also serrated and it fits perfectly on the serration of the HEC anchor. In the end, a tightening torque guarantees the transfer of the load in all directions. HEC is a system that connects precast concrete elements for primary as well as for secondary load bearing applications. This is applicable for both temporary and permanent applications. Below you see here four different combinations of wall and floor elements connections. HEC can be cast in longitudinal or transversely in concrete elements. This allows in the elements, for example, residential construction to be mounted from the inside or from the outside of the building. Below you can see both applications. The standard hack anchors can be used in almost all situations. How to fix the anchor on a mold, quite simple. Mark the position accurately and drill a hole 11 millimeter on the formwork. Then assemble the block, the plate together on the hack connection and fix the set in total on the formwork with the hack fixing set. Then after harden of the concrete, unscrew the fixing and remove the recess with the ball in the socket on the top. Fixing on site is also quite easy. 
check if the serration is clean. That's very important. So that in the end, the plate, the counter plate has a hole on the, on the anchor, uh, on the heck anchor itself. Insert the serrated counter plate with a fixing bolt into the hole and screw the ball M16 into the fixing anchor. If there's a joint, fill that with a heck shim. Serration should be in the right direction. So in the right direction, uh, just like on the heck anchor. Then in the end, tighten with a torque in line with the installation manual. HEC has durable, reusable polyurethane recess formers that are fixed or magnetic. Here you can see the recess uh, set consisting of a hard block and an intermediate plate. These are attached to the mold, including the HEC anchor with a threaded end. The soft intermediate plate protects the serration and prevents dirt in this area. Here we see the magnetic polyurethane recess forms, and it contains four magnets. Two recess forms are suitable for mounting from the inside. The small magnets on the head of the anchor, you see it here, the red arrows, are to place the heck anchor on the recess in the first step. And the two large magnets in the blue arrows are to place the recess, including the heck anchor, on the steel form work. There are two versions of these recesses, the blue color in the middle with the light magnets for horizontal placement and the green color on the right with the heavy magnets for vertical placement. Currently we have five different magnetic recess formers that cover all possibility, possible applications. After the installation, the recess can be filled with mold or a standard light concrete filling block. By gluing the filling block locally in the recess and finishing it evenly, it can easily be removed with a hammer for disassembly. Then the concrete elements are disassembled. Now I would like to hand over the presentation to Rogier van der Brink. Yes, thank you, Richard. Uh, hello, guys. My name is Roger van der Brink. In Dutch, it's Rogier. It's a bit difficult, so we keep it at Roger. My role uh, with the 4 by Prefab company is project manager for all housing projects. Our factory is a precast factory uh, specialized in housing, and we're based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. I will try to give you a glimpse of how we developed and integrated the half and hack connection uh, in our factory process. When we started running the first pilot with the new hack connection at the beginning of 2018, we had been looking for a dry replacement for that old fashioned welding plate for several years. Our partner Halve uh, introduced us a further developed type of the hack one connection uh, with which you could create a rigged connection between two concrete elements by just tightening a bolt. This sounded nice at the time, but could this also be constructively sufficient with our current factory? and our reinforcement configurations, uh, we wondered. The first pilot projected on, on one house became a fact. Within our structural concept, the hack connection turned out to be actually perfectly applicable to the same working method as we used other type of corner connections between building wall and facade. Uh, our engineers were able to handle this surprisingly well. The technical base of the hack is simple. The speed of installation of this connection turned out to be enormous at the construction site. A new standard was born soon uh, within our process. From our production process, we immediately invested in sufficient magnet recess formers to quickly and custom fit the hack connection in the mold. Within the BIM models, scripts have been developed uh, that automatically convert the reinforcement stirrups and recess formers into a plot in the data files that control our production. Deviation tolerances in dimensions and positioning is something that requires attention within the application of the hack connection. But after some fine tuning on the factory floor, however, uh, a good modus was found here uh, that was in balance with our short lead times within the, uh, the process. Today, the hack connection is fully standardized in our engineering process. Uh, to process this as an option in models nowadays is only a matter of select selecting an option. The connection is also very well received by our customers. More and more customers are opting for the hack connection, even without a construction background, but practical because it is so easy to install from the inside, for example. 
there are more and more contractors who choose to build structural houses without traditional scaffolding. Here, the head connection with indoor mounting is an excellent solution. All in all, the head connection is a top addition to our whole concept, and an average 40% of our total production is already head connection based at this point. In our structural housing concept, the Leviat projects include the half a hack precast connections, uh, but also the TPA lifting anchors from Halve and DEMU fixing anchors. On the left, we see a 3D model of the walls of a single house. And on the right, we see the hack connection fixed by bolts on DEMU bolt anchors and TPA Frimeda lifting anchors. The top recess can be filled with a filler block, which is a good option. Most walls in housing are connected with two connections in the corners, as you can see in this 3D model shot, which is pretty easy. Our production runs on a carousel of 80 steel mold tables. At the right, you see two hack connections installed in the mold. The blue recess formers are used for indoor mounting. Measurements are all taken from the 3D model data, which we process to robot data in our engineering process. Uh, this translates into placement of the steel frames by our robot and the steel tables and plots for measurements for all inserts like the head connection, the lifters, etc. Here we see the yellow recess formers. Uh, these are used for outdoor mounting. So you have two versions, indoor and outdoor. Uh, and at the right, you again see the installation of the bolt anchor in, on the magnet plate. Uh, everything uh, regarding inserts in our molding process is magnet based. From the left to the right, you see the process from installation on the mold, uh, casting in the wall element to fixing the head connection on site. Here we have the lifting and fixing the structural panels on the construction site, which is very easy, goes very quick. And then finally, uh, you see finished roofs and the isolation and brick laying of the facades. And now we go to a short movie of our process in the factory regarding hack. It starts with applying oil and grease on all mold components for easier demolding next day. Then we put hack connection on our magnet recess formers. And it's the steel parts for molding the wall shape are placed by our robot. And the steel table with the mold moves through our factory process where inserts are being placed in the mold. Uh, reinforcement is placed in the mold and eventually to where the concrete is poured. Next day, we demold the element with the connection as you see. And now I will hand it back over to Richard. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rohia, for this contribution. Well, the second sample I'd like to show you is a project which is called Morgan Bone, and this is an industrial platform for the uh, production of uh, sustainable homes uh, of very high quality, low maintenance cost, and zero energy cost in the end. It concerns the production of single family houses and apartments. Eight years ago, we were involved in this uh, development of the precast, uh, prefabricated modular houses. Initially, it concerned one base variant. This has been expanded with several variants later on. From the beginning, the engineering takes place entirely in BIM. As a supplier, we engineered our product systems and placed them in the base model. The first assembly of the houses was realized by the previous HEC-1 and was replaced in 2018 by the new HEC-2 connection from this presentation. The house is mounted on a completely flat prefabricated foundation. All floor and wall elements are connected to the precast staircase unit with the head connection. The precast staircase ensures the stability of the entire house. Each house contains in total 32 head connections uh, for the entire assembly. And all precast elements are installed completely dry and demountable. These are the Leviat products included, the hack dry connection system, HD threaded lifting anchors, the SPA sandwich anchors, the FA facade accessories, DEMU fixing anchors, and the DEMU rebar connection. 
we supply a specific mix of each product in a bag per element in the factory. In totally, an average of 500 pieces, they are split in 25 bags per house and delivered every day. Here you can see some details in the house, connecting the facade to the attic floor. At the left, in the left detail, you see the connection of the heck anchor with the demu fixing anchor. Four lifting anchors HD are cast in in both layers of each sandwich facade element. The sandwich elements are lifted on four anchors in both layers. You will see that later on in the movie. The left view shows the connection on a ground floor element to the wall of the precast staircase unit and the connection to the front wall. At the right view shows the detail under the construction on the first floor with the staircase unit and also the connection to the wall uh, with the staircase unit. On the left, you can see the production of the sandwich facade element with cast in stone strips in the facing layer. On the right, you see the staircase unit, which ensures the stability of the entire house. In the center of this unit is the cabling shaft. The assembly begins on a precast foundation, which is installed with a maximum tolerance of one millimeter. And that's very important to start at a very horizontal uh, level. The picture shows the installation in the open ribs of the floor that has been installed in the factory. The installation of each element is connected on site. The prefabricated bathroom is lifted into the house on the left. On the right, the technical installation is lifted up to, to the attic floor, just above the shaft of the staircase. The left photo shows the prefabricated bathroom. The installation of this unit is connected to the main installation in the staircase unit. On the right, you can see the lifting of a sandwich facade element on the ground floor. Here you see the mounting of a facade element on the left and the mounting of a roof element on the right. And this is the result in the end. The modular prefabricated houses can be delivered within two weeks after start of the assembly on the foundation. The quality is very high regarding IFDS and the failure costs are almost zero. I'll now show you a very short movie of this project. Oh, something goes wrong. First four elements are assembled and after that is okay. With the shoes stability. Bathroom listed in and connected. <laughs> and 
this year installation unit. This is just above the staircase. Shade elements. This is on four transport anchors. The roof elements. Covered with solar panels to guarantee zero energy use. This was the first project seven years ago. It contained 12 houses which were installed in 12 days. The first house needed 15 years. The last The next project concerns two apartment buildings of contractor Van Weyden in Groningen in 2019. This project had to be fully circular and disassembled after 10 years. A single house and apartment will be rebuilt uh, another, on another location in 2029. The facts of this project called Loskade in Groningen, it contains a uh, 16 single houses and 32 apartments. It is completely 3D uh, engineered. And all houses and apartments are designed and installed with heck dry connections. Here you see the assembly at the ground floor. They install two apartments per day. At the right, you see the detail of the mounted heck. The contractor will assemble his own cover plate later on to make the houses dismountable after 10 years. Here we see the two apartment blocks, 32 apartments assembled within 16 working days. The last project I'm showing today is the London City Island. The residential towers engineered in BIM were produced in the Netherlands and transported to London. The precaster builders executes and controls the entire process from engineering, production, logistic to assembly on site. The contractor realizes the foundation, the ground floor and the first floor. After that, builders takes over the rest of the construction with complete prefabrication and installation by mobile crane without any scaffolding. Facts of the London Island project. In total, 1800 apartments built in four years. 10 towers with an average facade of 15 facades per a tower. It is again a BIM 3D design process. It is built on a very tight schedule without any delay. It is produced in the Dutch factory and shipped to London by truck and ferry just in time before installation. Regarding the production, also that is a full 3D BIM process uh, until the production in the factory. All buildings are, of this project are custom made it have a specific mold production methods and the sandwich elements do include full brick facing layers. Which products of Leviat are included? The HD threaded lifting anchors, the PK4 sandwich brickwork support, you see at the right, the red uh, colored, the FA sandwich anchors, the fixing anchors from Demu and the Demu rebar connection. At the left, you see an impression of a BIM model of the tower. On the right, you see a detail of the bottom connection of the sandwich element. The sandwich PK4 system cast in, in, in a load bearing in a leaf and supports the masonry facing layer on the front. In the vertical direction, the sandwich element connection is made by a coupling of DEMU reinforcement connections in combination with gains and casting model. See the detail in the middle. 
In the horizontal direction, the elements are connected by loop boxes in combination with reinforcement bars and casting mortar. The precast elements are temporarily braced until the floors have been installed, all joints have been poured, and the total has hardened sufficiently. All precast elements are transported by trucks and ferried to London. The elements arrive just in time at the construction site and are listed and assembled immediately. A completely level, including walls and floors, are assembled within two weeks time. On the right, we see a precast connection which uh, has a low rise and a high rise element. And they show how complicated the element connections can be. Now follows a very short um, time-lapse movie uh, of the construction of two apartment towers of the London city island. Contractor realized the foundation, the ground floor and the first floor. After that, builders takes over the rest of the construction with complete prefabrication and installation by mobile crane and without any scaffolding. A working module, the building site is much better organized than in the traditional way of work. Okay, now I'll show uh, other applications using hack connections for concrete precast panels. The first one is an energy unit consisting of one floor element, four sandwich wall elements, and one roof element per unit. All the elements are produced a single part first. Traditionally, these elements were assembled and connected by casting welding plates. The assembly was done by a welding angle uh, welded on both sides. The new way of production and connection by the HEC system saved the precaster in the end 70% on labor cost and 50% on fixing and finishing off. The second example I show concerns a complicated sandwich element for a big tower called Wonder Woods in Utrecht in the middle of Holland. Each element has two, three or four 
integrated flower boxes on the facing layer. The entire concrete facade, including the flower boxes, must also be polished after pouring the concrete. That was almost impossible for this project. By fixing the finished flower boxes with the head connection on the finished sandwich panels, the production in the factory is much easier and cheaper in the end. These applications show how the HEC system can provide a simple solution for various connections. What do we provide on information for the HEC system? We have a technical catalog, an installation manual, a tool awesome, a technical design software for calculation, a HEC app, uh, which is suitable for Apple and for Android, a movie on YouTube, and we have local support in engineering. What we also do is we further develop the HEC 2 system into a HEC 3 system with more tolerances in the end. Well, that was my presentation. I hope you enjoyed the samples. Are there any questions? Very good, Richard. Thank you for that presentation and for Roger as well for your contribution to that. Um, excellent presentation. And gee, it's fascinating to watch modular concrete construction taking place. It really is fantastic. I know that we've got some people who are on, uh, on the uh, webinar today who have got some experience here in Australia with modular construction. Um, so I'm quite sure we'll get some questions from them. But as we're waiting for a couple of those, um, I might lead the questions, Richard, with, with, um, with one to start with on how you transported the modular concrete um, elements from the Netherlands to England, to London. Um, what sort of uh, design mechanisms did you need to use for the restraint? Um, on the transportation and how long did you have, how long were they on the road for? Um, how did that process take place? And I guess Roger might also be in a position to, to help. With that. Well, the elements have to be transported, uh, of course, on the road and by ferry. So this limits, of course, the dimensions of the element, that's for sure. So they have special lorries uh, in which they can have them transported under a certain edge yeah, that uh, the elements can have the maximum dimensions in the end. It's quite an intensive process. But uh, yeah, it suits, it, it works. And what sort of design process was involved to, to ensure that the, the restraints were, were okay so that there weren't any, there weren't any damage to the, uh, to the panels or to the elements on there um, whilst they were being transported? The design process, you mean that the design process uh, is done completely in, in TechLar, in 3D software. Okay. Okay. And what sort of um, uh, codes do you generally use, Richard? Are you using uh, European codes or FIB um, uh, guidelines? We use European codes, but uh, those codes, uh, for instance, for the project in, in the UK are also uh, say, uh, changed for the European uh, approvals. Okay. Now we do have a question, um, Richard, from our national president, Sean Kuma, who's very much involved in modular precast construction here in Australia. He asks, what's the gap between precast elements? How do you control tightening of the bolts? Is it suitable for high rise core construction? Well, that's a very good question. The tolerances have to be very limited. Uh, this means that uh, the tolerances, for instance, the houses I showed, in the first, uh, in the second sample of Mont Blanc, they have a tolerance of about one or two millimeters maximum. So if you start assembling and you go up to higher levels, then it's very important to keep the tolerances very, very tight. Uh, this means also for apartment buildings, we're facing also uh, the first projects which will go higher than three or four levels. Uh, you have to limit the tolerances in the elements. This is the first thing. And second thing you have to create a certain level where you will balance the tolerances again in order to start uh, mounting up again. Okay. Um, I was also really interested, Richard, in that um, in the video where you showed the uh, solar panels being attached to the roof of, uh, of the building. Um, I'm going to throw it open to those who are on the, on the webinar from, uh, from Australia and ask if they have had any experience with something similar here. But um, I wonder if you're able to elaborate or tell us a little bit more about how, um, how they were attached and how they might work in, a, in that instance. Because I, I was really interested to see how that, how that applied. Well, I must say I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a specialist on, 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 uh, on solar panels, but uh, they are quite easy 
uh, say fixed on, on a wooden frame on the roof, on the roof elements. And they use also aluminum uh, profiles, uh, which are screwed also on, on the, the, the roof elements. And this is the more, way, more or less the way they are fixed on the roof. And Roger, I'm interested to know as well, um, the interaction that your organization has, um, not just with Leviat, but with the designers and the contractors as well, as a precaster in the Netherlands, how do how do you fit in with um, with the work involved in that process? Do you have designers um, within your organisation, or are you working with other design companies? How how does that process work in the Netherlands? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, our factory is trying to um, be a co maker, so that's uh, a little different than the traditional um, contractor and a supplier. We're more like a partner on the table um, and like all other partners. This is a new setting in the Dutch uh, building market. So this means you are um, attached to the process early on from a uh, designing process to making a level three model and then to production level. Um, we like to be at the table at the very first uh, moment. So th this is a new thing in, in Holland for the last few years. Uh, and that is the, the part we like to play. So we can uh, make adjustments in design very early on uh, with the contractor. Yeah, I think it's important to have that interaction, isn't it? And I know in Australia we have um, our, our precast Concrete companies have very close interaction with designers, with contractors, and also with their suppliers. Um, and I know we've got some of our precast suppliers on the on the line today. Um, we have a question. Um, it could be for either of you. I think I'm not 100 percent sure. Could the connection be applied as an intermodular connection between modules um, in volumetric prefabricated prefinished modules? Or, or in other words, asking is it is it tested? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It is tested in in different types of loads, in different uh, types of uh, concrete strengths. Also, <clears throat> so in total, you can use uh, this connection uh, on different uh, different uh, applications. Sorry, also in regards to the volumetric items, of course, we we can use this uh, also in a more volumetric item. It's just the more complex the item gets, the more you have to make sure that the tolerances are okay. So if you're putting that in an L-shaped panel and, and connect two L-shaped items to each other, then of course everything needs to fit together. So the, the, the precaster has to make sure he, he can stay within the tolerance. And in regards to the testing, yes, this item has been completely tested and uh, we have an independent approval which was given by the German Institute for Building Technology. So that's one of the uh, most truly process you can you can run through to to get an approval like this. So yeah, this has all been tested. Got another question here uh, for floor H E K connections. Do we have flexural capacity, or do we have to design for shear and select the point where flexure is little or zero? Yeah, we wouldn't take any bending moments all over that. No, it it is a pure shear connection. And you have to pick the item that you need regarding the shear load. So there's one item that can take over a lateral shear, and there is a one that takes over the shear perpendicular to the lateral direction. So yeah, but but it is always going to be a shear load connection. So it would be placed off at the point of zero moment. All right. Well, it looks like all our questions have dried up, and I know that it's very early over in the Netherlands. So I'm sure Roger and Richard are very keen to uh, go and grab a morning cup of coffee. Um, so with that in mind, well, I will thank all our presenters today for, uh, for their presentations and for their time. Um, as I mentioned before, I thought the, uh, the presentation from Richard and Roger was, uh, was very, uh, very interesting and I'm particularly interested in that modular construction um, project that we saw at the very end in the UK. I um, thought that was extremely interesting. Um, but before we go today, I would like to just mention that we have a couple more uh, webinars left the 2020 on Thursday afternoon, we will be presenting concrete construction for durability. Uh, we'll have Rob Kilgore, who's principal for materials with bg and &E, and we'll also have Sean Windred, who's senior materials engineer with bg and &E, presenting for us there. And then our final webinar for 2020 uh, will be a bit of fun, concrete and luxury houses with Andrew Durbage. 
Andrew is a director with Partridge Structural, um, but Partridge Structural have also won the Concrete Institute of Australia's Medallion for Excellence in Concrete for Residential Buildings for the last three award programs. And they'll have some excellent stories to tell with some of the work that they've been involved in there. So that's it for us today. Once again, thank you to Richard and Roger for making yourselves available so early in the morning uh, over in the Netherlands. And we look forward to seeing you at our next event, hopefully on Thursday afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.